Right guys, welcome back to Official Strongman. I'm back again, playing it sick of me, I don't know. This might be the first video, who knows. I'm gonna talk today about what strong men can learn from other sports. So, um, obviously, I'm not talking about football, I'm talking about like weightlifting, powerlifting, bodybuilding. What can we take from uh, these sports which are quite similar to strongman and apply and utilize in our training methods? So the best one to uh, start off with is, is, is bodybuilding, really, because most people that get into strength sports tend to have come from this kind of background where they're not really a bodybuilder, they just train, but they're bodybuilders. Uh, and what we can learn from this is basically how to get a good hypertrophic response, so how to grow muscle tissue. Um, we learn the stretch and squeeze method of training. Now, if you haven't come from like a bodybuilding background, it can be a bit of a detriment in a way because you get so used to training uh, for strength where you're doing really explosive concentric exercise. Um, again, like I spoke about with eccentrics, not much control of the eccentric. Like for example, on a bench press, it's down and bang, power. You probably can't see my arms there actually, but whatever, I just did a bench press. What I'm trying to say is they're not doing specific hypertrophy style training. They're doing strength training with these uh, fast explosive uh, fibers in that initial energy system we spoke about. And then when it comes to assistance exercises, what tends to happen is people get a bit relaxed and they just they do a few lap pull downs or a few rows, a few curls, and then they go. And what we can learn from bodybuilding is we know that we have to fill the muscle tissue with blood. We have to stretch the fascia to enable it to grow. So, and we need to basically ramp up protein synthesis by giving a lot of volume into, into the area. So we need to basically apply those principles to our assistance training. And that is um, where learning a bodybuilding style training or coming from that background is really gonna help you. So we do our deadlifts, we do our squats, our log or whatever, and then it's time to do assistance. Let's say we're doing quads then we would then do that stretch and squeeze method. We would have a good mind-muscle connection, thinking about the quad, making sure that the quad is isolated and working, controlling the concentric and the eccentric, so we don't need to necessarily do an explosive concentric. We could even control the concentric and the eccentric, getting lots of time under tension. We know factually that 30 to 45 seconds is the best range of time under tension for muscle growth. So again, if you do a set of 10 knee extensions, if you do them extremely fast, because you're um, a strong and a and you just bang, 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 fire them out. Yeah, you've done a set of 10, but again, rep ranges don't like them because that set of 10 done in 10 seconds is a lactic and has not even gone into this, these are the latest systems that I've spoke about. Uh, so we need to stray out the time of the tension. It's very important to, to do that. Um, and the stretch and squeeze, so making sure we're going to the bottom end range of motion, stretching the head of the quads, and then extending up and squeezing isometrically at the top of the range of motion. We know that these, the, the stretch and squeeze method is the, basically the best way to grow muscle tissue. So it's a, a great benefit to learn this and, and apply it to all your exercises, whether it be knee extensions, pec flies, the same thing, lateral raises, hamstring curls, Every single assistance exercise you do, you should be doing this way. It should be timed rest, so we're working hard, heart rate's up, should be lots of blood flow. It shouldn't be do a set of curls, go on my phone, lean on some, go, do a set of curls, lean on some, no. It's, that's not, you may as well just not do the curls. Um, and we know for factually that the more muscle tissue we have, the higher your strength potential is. So it's very important to grow con continuously throughout the year because that's going to help you get stronger. More muscle fibers you have, the bigger the fibers, the higher the contraction we can we can produce. So that's bodybuilding. Now weightlifting, what can we learn from weightlifting? Now weightlifters, they flow through movement. Their feet aren't cemented into the ground, they're, they're in triple extension, they're explosive, they're fast, they're mobile and um, they're also Strangely enough, you might not know this, but they're very fit aerobically. It's a very taxing exercise, this is the, the, snatch, the snatch and cleaning jerk. <laughs> I said something else then. I said there's a lot of things in the snatch is very aerobic, and you know, but whatever. Um, right. So when you're hitting the snatch, for, <sighs> that's what I was trying to say. When you're hitting the snatch for reps, it's very aerobic. So when this is a very fit, very conditioned, they've got high work capacity, high, high work rate, they're great and they flow for this movement. They're on the tippy toes all the time. And that's something that uh, strong men need to learn because bag throwing, uh, leg drive on log, uh, leg drive on axle, leg drive on dumbbell. If your heels are cemented into the ground, you're not gonna flow your power into the implement. We need to be able to learn to put power into the, the implement. And if you're not leaving the floor, uh, then you're not gonna be putting power into the implement. You're just gonna be hitting, hitting the brakes, bang. 
uh, which you don't want to do. You need to be able to flow from movement. We can learn a lot from weightlifters. Overhead mobility and stability. They have really good mobility and really good stability, which is something that we need in Strongman because every single comp you do, you will have an overhead of them. So again, do you need to go out and learn to snatch and clean and jerk? No, you don't. But you need to understand the mechanics behind triple extension because the one thing you will be doing in your training is a push press, I imagine. And that is basically the, the same dip, the same drive as a split jerk. So even if you're not a split jerker and you uh, just want to push press, you need to transition those biomechanics across to, to your lift. So you can take a lot from weightlifters. Um, if you're efficient at snatching, you're going to be really good at uh, bag throw, keg throw, whatever you've got to throw. And if you're good at split jerking, you're going to usually have really efficient, neutral torso, good leg drive on, on, on a log. So you don't need to, don't, don't say that I'm trying to, to go learn those movements. You don't need to learn those movements. You just have to take the principles from them and apply them to the specific movements you do. And then uh, powerlifting. Obviously, powerlifting and strongman are kind of very similar. Powerlifting, you're training for one rep maxes. So like we've mentioned about energy systems a million times, they tend to stay in this initial energy system. And again, we need to train like that sometimes because sometimes you're going to have like max deadlift events. So you're going to be in that initial energy system, that creatine phosphate energy system. So we need to take the powerlifting principles that they utilize to peak to one rep maxes on deadlifts. Uh, and even the bench press, you can pretty much just flip that to an overhead program and it'll work um, completely fine. So yeah, those principles for, for peaking for maxes are going to be great leading up to competitions with those events in. But also, the one thing that we can learn from powerlifting is we don't want to be completely specific to that energy system. We need to be able to branch out and stray away from it. Because if you get a really strong powerlifter and got him to do some carry medley event, he would die because he's just never strays out of this energy system. So his body is really inefficient at converting glucose into ATP. So he gets a lot of lactic acid, etc., And he's just going to not be able to process it all. And he's going to run out of steam. So we need to learn from them as well, not to be too specific because as a strong man, you've kind of got to be jack of all trades. You've got to be, uh, you've got to take the flexibility extension and work capacity of a weightlifter, the max strength of a powerlifter. And obviously uh, in bodybuilding, you've got to be able to take the hypertrophy effects of bodybuilding. You've got to blend them all together and become this all around athlete. As you may have got from this video, Strongman is absolutely awesome and you'll be a boss if you get good at it, but don't, don't get stuck in this little box. Branch out, learn these other sports as well. Watch them, watch weightlifters. You don't need to go snatch, but learn the triple extension and understand what it is. Bodybuilding programs. Watch some uh, Kai Green, stretch and squeeze them pecs, baby. And then, uh, yeah, watch some fat power to lift some big weights. So CrossFit. What we can learn from CrossFit? Loads, actually. And I can't believe I forgot to mention that. Joe has had to remind me <laughs> about CrossFit. One of my favorite things to do as well, and the whole program instructor is kind of based around stuff I did with, from CrossFit. So CrossFit didn't invent, but they kind of came up with and made popular EMOMs every 90 seconds, you know, AMRAPs in 10 minutes, stuff like that. Those training principles are absolutely brilliant for strongman. EMOMs on log, you can train that aerobic energy system. I'm going to put my hand here again because I've placed today energy systems here and I'll keep going back to them. But anyway, energy system, that aerobic energy system, you do an EMOMs for like 15 minutes. Like we talked about, the energy system is going to go through them and you're going to be in that aerobic energy system. But we're going to be doing ticking off specific movement, like log, say it's a log press, floor to overhead every minute on the minute, 15 minutes. You've got 15 minutes of good work. You've condensed good work into this little pocket of 15 minutes. You've stuck to good rest times. You've trained your aerobic energy system and you've also trained the specific movement heavy for singles uh, with a set rest time. How is that going to help you? Well, I'm sure you already know. You can, you can imagine it in your brain. You're going to get fitter. You're going to get stronger. You're going to get better at singles on a log, which often max log is a, a very common event. Now, same thing with uh, log for reps. You could do a AMRAP floor to overhead in five minutes. Now, in Strongman, you're only going to need to, to train that 60-second mark, but you can, you can uh, periodize it linearly. So you can start at five minutes and then work your way down. So, so basically, you're conditioning yourself to a silly amount of reps, and then almost when you get to the 60 second mark, it feels easy because like I say, you've trained that energy system that I keep speaking about to be efficient uh, at converting glycogen into ATP. So um, you can learn a lot from CrossFit. And like I've said this uh, in, in the video about lightweights that some of the top CrossFitters are, that weigh like 85 kilos are actually better than some under 90 kilo strongmen uh, and they don't even train strongman. And it's just because 
of the way they train and how much work they can put in due to their um, work capacity, aerobic capacity, etc. So, like I said, don't get stuck in that box. Blend everything together. Uh, blend everything together and you'll just be an absolute savage. My name is Shane Jaman, the Dragon. Follow me at MSC Systems. Follow Official Strongman and subscribe to the website, officialstrongman.com. Thank you.